Well, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be going over the Necromancer tank for PvE. Now, Necromancer tanking is a little different, and I am actually having a blast doing it. So, it's definitely one of my favorite tanking classes since it's been added. Very different. So, let's go ahead and jump into it. I have 20k max magicka. I have 45.3k health and 21.7k max stamina. My magic recovery is 1.4. I have 28.3k spell resistance and 27.9k physical resistance. Now keep in mind, that is buffed. They're not going to get any higher. But due to the mitigations that we have, it's not a huge deal. It's not a huge problem. Now, I am an Imperial, so if you go Nord, those resistances will be around cap. You know, spell resistance will definitely hit cap, and physical resistance will be about a thousand underneath cap, or it could be a cap as well. I know it gives you 4K in the Necromancer as the Nord passive, but uh, I don't remember the change. So either way, you will be pushing cap as a Nord. I am an Imperial, but I kind of like Imperial. Now, I have 35 points in Magicka and 29 in two stamina. The boon I'm running is the Atro, and I'm using basic. Try set food, long fin pasta, you know, any of that works. You can use crown food as well. Bee Wisher Skull is probably the best one that you could, that you should use. It'll give you some health recovery as well with the stats. Uh, but I understand Bee with Sugar Skull may be expensive to make, but so this is just basic try set food. So champion points: Bree Standard, 23 Warlord, 18 Sprinter. 25 Bashing Focus, 64 Arcanus, 64 Tenacity, 28 Tumbling, 48 Shadow Ward, 64 Blessed. Uh, these don't really matter as much, but 35 Physical Weapon Expert, 51 Master in Arms, 40 Thermometage, 13 Precise Strike, 24 Piercing, 43 Mighty, 28 Ironclad, 51 Spell Shield, 64 Hardy, 64 Elemental Defender, 19 Quick Recovery, and 44 Heavy Armor Focus. Now, sets. Let's go see what this notification. Hey, hey, not bad. Now, the first set is an oldie but a goodie. Plug Doctor. You get this from Deshaun. Now, it's relatively cheap. No matter which way you go about it, you'll find some on the high end. But for the most part, you'll find it on the low end as well. Just depends on how well you look around. Um... We have a weakening enchant on an infused mace here, but you can really use a dagger, an axe, or a sword. Any of it, all of it's okay. As long as it's one-handed infused. Then we have a sturdy shield with max health enchant. We have a sturdy um, reinforced work here as well if you want more resistances. But I have a sturdy shield, or you can go infused for a little more max health. It's really up to you. And then we have an ice staff on the back bar infused with a crusher enchant. Now... What this set does is it gives us max health, max health, healing taken, and more max health. 2.8k max health. It is a lot of max health. And you'll find a lot of the necro abilities will scale off of max health. So this makes for a great set to pair with the necro. Another set that's really good that will increase your max health overall is, uh, I want to say, Green Pact. I think it's that green pack. They increase your health based on the food buff you have. It's kind of like a uh, bone pirate, but for health. So either that one or beekeeper. But I want to say it's green packed. But don't quote me on it. So, now, the monster set we're running is Mighty Chudan. Of course, infused with the batter on the helmet. Uh, but we have a sturdy, we have a medium sturdy helmet. Medium with max health. And we have a light sturdy with max health. This is for the 511 setup for our undaunted passives. What this does is it gives us armor, it gives us max health, and it gives us major resolve at all times increasing your physical and spell resistance by 5.2. Now, necromancers have a skill that gives us major resolve and major ward, and it also I just don't care that much for it. I, I would rather use Chudang for the extra health, but if you don't want to do that, uh, I'll go over the skill that you replace it with and uh, you can run something like Lord Warden or Blood Spawn. Uh, Blood Spawn will give you a little more resistances, uh, but Lord Warden would probably put you at cap, even as an Imperial. So it's up to you on what you want to run. 
Now, we're also running Plague Doctor on Waste Sturdy with Max Health, uh, Hens are Gauntlet Sturdy with Max Health, and Feet Sturdy with Max Health. Now, the second five piece set that we're pairing with this is the Brands of Imperium. This set comes from White Gold Tower, and it is a fun set to use. Gives us max health, max health healing taken, and when you take damage, you have a 10% chance to grant you and your allies within 8 meters a damage shield that absorbs 11.6k damage for 6 seconds. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds. So it's a relatively good sized shield, and it goes off more frequently than you think it would at 10%. So... We're running a heavy. We're running a chest infused with max health, legs infused with max health, and then we have a jewelry, all with magic recovery. You don't need it to be gold. I, I got one from the golden vendor a while back. Uh, I just haven't. They have not put the rings in there. I think I got it like six months ago, and I have not seen the rings in there yet. So, kind of weird. I don't know. So either way, this is a really good set. I like it. It gives you that, that, that bubble of extra damage to your, your team that stacks with their shield and everything else, so it works out perfectly. Now, if you just want to go for a max health build uh, that is very cheap and ineffective, or inexpensive, not ineffective, but inexpensive, Plague Doctor, Warrior Poet, or Plague Doctor, and Green Pact. Any of those will give you a huge pool of health and it will scale really well with the rest of your abilities. Now, skills. We have Pierce Armor. This is your main taunt. It's going to deal some damage and it's going to last for 15 seconds and it's going to flick the enemy with Major Fracture and Major Breach, reducing their physical and spell resistance by 5.2 for 15 seconds. So as you can see it on the dummy here, that shield, it's going to last. You'll see it counting down. The other two next to it, is major fracture and major breach so you want to kind of reapply this while it gets to around the three second mark on it so that way you don't lose aggro and then you don't get yelled at because the boss turned around and smacked a dps or it ran off and ran out of somebody's ultimate uh, heroic slasher this is going to afflict minor maim reducing their damage down by 15 percent for 12 seconds and you also gain minor heroism granting you one ultimate every 1.5 seconds for 12 seconds. This is really good to reduce their damage so this is going to apply some of that damage mitigation plus it's going to give us some ultimate back. Necrotic potency here is an amazing ability. It saps the lingering life from fresh corpses granting you 6 ultimate and healing 2.2k health every 1 second for 2 seconds per additional corpse. This ability scales off your max health while slot, your damage taken is reduced by 3%. So we have this here. This is going to give us more damage mitigation, which is why we can get away without having our resistances at cap. Now, Mortal Coil. I have this front barred and back barred because I want it active at all times. This is going to connect to a corpse. It's going to siphon the last remnants of life from a corpse, healing for 9.7k health over 12 seconds to yourself and all allies between you and the corpse. The portion of this ability scales off your highest offensive stat. You also restore 1.2k stamina over 12 seconds while siphoning the corpse. While slotted, your healing done is increased by 3%. I want that healing that that healing increased on at all times. That's why I have a double bard. If you don't care, if you don't have to have it active at all times, I would recommend putting necrotic here on both bars. So I would take that one and replace mortal coil on the back bar with necrotics here. So that way your damage is reduced by 3%, whether on your front bar or your back bar. That is just my opinion. This is just how I like it. If you want it the other way around, by all means, go for it. And then we have Spirit Garden. Conjure Ghostly Spirit to do your bidding and stay by your side for 16 seconds. The Spirit heals you or the lowest, ally, lowest health ally around you every 2 seconds, restoring 2.2k health. While active, 10% of the damage you take is transferred to the Spirit instead. So this is some more damage mitigation. So we're getting an additional 3% here. This is going to reduce their damage by 15%. And then on top of that, this is going to take 10% of the damage you would take instead. And then we have Aggressive Warhorn. You're going to sound a Warhorn Rally. 
Uh, your forces increase in you and your group's max magicka and max stamina by 10% for 30 seconds. You and your allies gain major force increase in your critical damage by 15% for 7 seconds. I believe at max rank this will last for 16 seconds, I want to say. I think that's it. But right now, mine is just at level 1. So, keep that in mind. The amount of time that the major major force will last will go up as this ranks up. So, and then our back bar, we have Inner Rage. This is our range taunt. Uh, we're going to uh, deal 2k magic damage and taunt them to attack for 15 seconds. A ranged ally targeting the taunted enemy can activate the Radiant Synergy, dealing 4.4k magic damage to them over 3 seconds, then an additional 3.9 magic damage to them and other nearby enemies. Well, let me go back to this Warhorn real quick. It Aggressive Warhorn. As you can see, it is level 1. I did not have Warhorn at first. I wanted to level up a tune to max because I know a lot of people say it is easier to get Warhorn in lower levels than it is at higher levels. So this is how long it took me. I know first I did it uh, not too long ago, probably two days ago. I went in, I did the main quest. When you go in, there's a little city. She'll ask you to go to... Uh, She'll ask you to deliver messages and stuff like that throughout there, and you're running around. You'll run to, you'll run out and try some uh, ballista, some siege weapons, and then you'll repair. Basic stuff that's just teaching you. When that is done, you will be a little over three, level three. You need to get to level four in order to get to grass of Fullhorn. It took me two, um, two battlegrounds in order to get the rest of the way up. And what I did, because I am a tank, I went in, you can queue randomly if you want it to. Um, you're just going to get that extra XP. But if you queue into a specific battleground, like if you just go down here, go to battlegrounds and go to a specific one, you're going to get the same amount of AP as if it was a random. It really doesn't matter if you win or lose. As long as if you win it, you're going to get more AP, of course. But if you lose, it's going to be the same or if you win, it's going to be the same as if it was a random regardless. The only thing the random is going to give you is extra XP and that premium battleground supplies. So, you can queue in, and I queued in for land grabs and or flag games. Capture the relic, chaos ball, either one of those is great. You can run in, you can grab the relic, you're a tank, you're not really going to die. And if you're a chaos ball, you can hold on to that ball the entire game. As long you know, as long as you're tanky enough, because it's no CP in these battlegrounds, so it worked out pretty well. It took me two. I got capture the relic the first time, and I got chaos ball the second time. Did not have any issues, and I got my warhorn. And then I had to do a bunch of randoms in order to get it <laughs> leveled up. So it didn't take that long. That is just me telling you personal experience. It did not take that long to get aggressive warhorn, and it wasn't that bad. So, now, Silver Leash. We've already went over in our rage here. Silver Leash, we're going to fire a Dongar's crossbow hook to pull an enemy to you, dealing 2.7k physical damage and reduce the movement speed by 30%. This is our pull. Now, if you are not using Chudan, you are not going to get major resolve at all, time, all times. Now, you can ditch this ability completely for. Uh, I don't have it learned for bone armor. Take it to the morph that best suits you afterwards. But what it's going to do is it's going to give you major resolve and it's going to increase your physical and spell resistance. Of course, it's going to create a corpse when the effect ends. But there is a morph that will pull enemies to you when they attack you from range. So, therefore, you can literally drop Silver Leech. Now, the pulls are not as good. I like Silver Leech because I like having control over who I pull and when they get pulled. With armor, it is, you know, if you get hit by two of them, it's only going to pull one. And it's going to be like a second or two before it pulls the other one. I'm not a big fan of that. That's why I don't use it. I just use Silver Leash. And because I'm not using this to get Major Resolve, I'm using Mighty Chudan as my monster set. That is my choice. If you would rather go with that, by all means, go for it. Do you want that more necro feeling? 
put that bone armor here, take it to the Morphit Pools, and ditch Silver Leash. Add it, that is up to you. Blockade of Frost. Slam your stuff down to create an area ice barrier in front of you, dealing 589 frost damage to enemies in the target area every one second, and reduce their movement speed by 40%. Chilled enemies become frozen or immobilized for four seconds. Basically, you want to keep this down because it's going to keep your crusher enchant up. As you can see, when it ditches, it restarts. So as long as this is down, your crusher enchant will be on them at all times. The moment it goes away, you'll see it. It stops ticking. It goes away. And then you have to, you can light attack too to reapply, but you want this down so it keeps going. And of course, Mortal Coil again, you know, we have that on both bar, but like I said, if you would rather not have the healing done on both bars, put ne Necrotic Potency here instead. Uh, Agony Totem, Summon, uh, in Effigy. A bone at your feet that gives minor protection to you and your allies for 11 seconds. Reduce damage taken by 8%. So again, we have more damage mitigation with this. After 2 seconds, the tone begins fearing nearby enemies every 2 seconds, causing them to cower in place for 4 seconds. Ally can activate pure agony, causing enemies to take 3.5k magic damage over 5 seconds, and applying minor vulnerability to them, increasing their damage taken by 8%. So, this is going to apply minor protection for you and your group in it and it's also going to be able to be activated and they're going to get minor vulnerability so they'll take 8% more damage. This comes in uh, handy quite a bit. Now, the ultimate here is a dealer's choice. You know, you have Warhorn on your front bar or you can have Warhorn on your back bar and you can put this one on, on your front bar. It doesn't matter. Now, I have animated Blast Bonds. What this does is it brings your allies back from the brink of death, resurrecting up to three allies at the target location. You consume up to three other corpses in the area and some of the blast bones for each corpse consumed. So it is nice. Now, if you don't want to use this, you know, if your group has a healer, it's doing really well, you don't need this. You know, the only times I felt like I really needed this was in uh, Vet Fangler. Or and vet, uh, vet Moon Hunter Keep. This was the only time I actually used this ability. Oh, no, no, no. I take that back. I did use it one other time in Blessed Crucible. <laughs> For some reason why, my whole uh, my whole team got wiped at the fire. I don't know why. I don't know how they couldn't avoid it. They just got hit. <laughs> and I used it once then. But the only dungeon that I consistently <laughs> used this then over Warhorn was Moon Hunter Keep and... Uh, what was the other one? Uh, man, I forgot. Oh, uh, was Moon Hunter Keep and uh, Fangler. There it goes. So, now, you can use this one as well. Ravenous Goliath. Become a horrific Ravenous Goliath, increasing your max health by 30,000 for 20 seconds and immediately restoring 30,000 health. So if you're not using a healer and you, you are low in health, you can pop this and you're going to jump up. While transforming your damaging light attacks restore 1k health, and your fully charged heavy attacks restore 2.5k health, and you deal you deal 2.9k magic damage to nearby enemies every second and heal for that amount. These ability scales off your max health. So again, this is the reason why we're running Plague Doctor. This is just another ability that does that. Now, or if you have the damage, you have the heals. So these, you're, you're you know, you're staying up. You don't really need to worry about your health. You're good. Your healer is casting aggressive Warhorn. You don't really need that either. But you don't have a Necro in your group. And so you got a Stamina Templar and a Mag DK, Magicka Dragonite, Glacius Colossus. I would use this over the Stamina Morph. That's why I'm showing this one. Um, it's Frozen Colossus Morph. Alicia Frost bitten flesh clauses, pulverized enemies in the area of the clauses, smash the ground three times over three seconds. Dealing 4.9k frost damage with the smash, and finally smash duns all enemies hit for three seconds. That's why I use this. It does not stun on the other morph. This morph stuns the enemy. But the dealing damage applies major vulnerability to any enemy hit for eight seconds, increasing their damage taken by 30%. Enemies hit cannot be affected again for 20 seconds. So, what that's going to do is that if we're using this, over the reanimated corpse and this is going they're going to take this is going to give them minor vulnerability so it's going to increase their damage taken by eight percent and then with this 
this is going to inc give them major vulnerability, which is again going to increase their damage by 30%. So, between these two, minor vulnerability, major vulnerability is covered, minor, uh, minor protection is covered, plus we have a ton of damage mitigation. It works out wonderfully. I haven't had much issues with this, and even tanking Vet Hell Raw, I didn't have much of an issue with it is either. I did Vet AA as well, but uh, we ended up not making it all the way. Uh, a lot of people started to disconnect. I don't know what happened. So when I, when I try to finish it, it, uh, it didn't happen. But we did get through Vet Hell Raw that night. Didn't have any issues with it there. So this works out wonderfully. Imperium, Plague Doctor, they're very selfish sets, but it works out pretty good. Now, if you're not too worried about being selfish, Imperium is still a really good set to have on. Replace Plague Doctor with Taraz Pact for the extra uh, the extra enchants and stuff like that. Make Crusher stronger, keep it up. I mean, so you can always go Taraz Pact or you can just wear Imperium all on the body and put Alkosh on if you have that from Malakash. You know, your weapons and jewelry because it is a medium armor set. Imperium is still a nice set to use, so is Plague Doctor. Plus, when you get to end game, you'll realize that you need a lot of different tanking sets. Like all these right here are filled with tanking sets from monster sets, res resilient, uh, leeching, a, a worm cult, <laughs> IA, Twilight Remedy, Olyrium, uh Asylum. You know, there's Alkosh. You know, you're going Jeller. You're going to need a lot of different sets. And here's the monster sets. Here's automated defense that I use a lot on a Nightblade tank. And I'm just wanting to have fun. But powerful assault, leeching dragon, like Dr. Gallant Ways. You're going to use a lot of stuff. So it's always good to have sets that you can use and have. Iron Blood, as you can see. So as long as you have tanking sets, you uh, won't go wrong. That's more of a PvP thing. Or right, some stuff I'm trying. So. There is a lot to it. And by all means, go for it. You can really apply. It's always good to have a selfish set. Especially when you're off tanking in certain trials. Because you won't always have a healer on you. The Vet Sanctum Affinian. If you're an off tanking that. You're not really going to have a healer with you. So Plague Doctor, Battalion Defender. Uh, Cyrodiil's Crest. Things like sets will heal you. Or sets that give you huge health pulls will come in handy. Earth Gore, Bogdan, Sentinels, Engine Guardian. There are tons of sets that you can definitely use on a tank. Uh, so there's not one great setup to use. But I had a lot of fun with this. I enjoy the Plague Doctor on a Necro Tank regardless of whether I'm being serious or just having fun. And Imperium is a nice set to have fun with. It gives a nice shield that comes in handy. Especially in certain trials where, you know, you're getting hit a lot and it's a DPS rush. That extra shield can go a long way to help with the DPS. I know in Vet Halls of Fabrication, Imperium there where you're all getting hit at the end. Or even on normal Halls of Fabrication when you're all getting hit. That extra shield can come in real handy. So, just keep that in mind. But have fun with this. Just have fun with your setup. But either way, I hope you enjoy it. hope you get out do a lot of stuff with this let me know how it works for you uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more just casual setups and until next time take care